Our next speaker is the prosecuting attorney from Mercer County. I had the pleasure of meeting Tim. Uh, we, we sit together on the Mercer County Health Board, and that's where I first met him. And when I asked him if he would speak at this, he, he did not hesitate. So it's a real pleasure to introduce Tim Tibales. They say that the best speeches are the ones that have the ending that's close to the beginning. So I'll try to keep that form on this today. To begin with, there was a, a Wall Street stockbroker, a professional athlete, and a first responder at the Pearly Gates. They were there being quizzed by St. Peter as to why they should get to heaven. The Wall Street stockbroker began first. He said, look, over my career I have made millions even though it was on a Ponzi scheme. And I have made hundreds of thousands of dollars for other people, even though other people have lost quite a bit of money. And uh, I feel that's why I should be getting at it. Next became a professional athlete. Professional athlete said, I've earned millions of dollars. I entertain many people across the, the U.S. I have made the Hall of Fame, and I even have a field named after me now, that they have dedicated to me because I was so great of an athlete. That's why I feel I should get to heaven. They got to the first responder, and the first responder said, I didn't make a lot of money. I dedicated my life to serving others. I did this by putting the needs of others before my own needs. I made sacrifices with my family. I've risked numerous times my own life to save the lives of others. I feel that's why I should be in heaven. Now, unlike a lot of stories that begin as this one did, this one does not have a punchline, but there is a moral to this story. And that is that I think at times we, we, have a, um, we, we misconstrue what our own priorities should be. At times we honor and respect those that are least deserving. But when you see what these first responders do, it is clear that they should be the ones that are the true heroes and garner the respect and admiration of all of us. Right now, I'd like to thank Dr. Stevens for inviting me to speak. And also, I'd like to thank the Bluefield Elks for having this every year in honor of our first responders. As a prosecuting attorney in Mercer County, I have a unique experience of working with many of these, these young men and women in our area. And I get to see firsthand the difficulties that they encounter. Those difficulties being the police officers responding to calls, not having any idea what dangers may lie ahead, yet they still answer that call running full tilt. The EMS and firemen that respond to calls, not knowing what's out there, when they respond to victims of violent crimes, not knowing who the perpetrator was or where the perpetrator might be, but they are there to take care of their victim, the one that needs their help. Not to mention that the times that they have to re respond to what some people may consider gruesome scenes and to deal with those activities on a daily basis and to cope with that with their families, they deserve a, lot, a great deal of gratitude. But it takes a special circumstance, it takes a very special person to deal with all these circumstances together. They are always preparing themselves for a worst case scenario. And to have that mindset day in, day out, that you're always preparing yourself for the worst, and yet still able to go out and cope and function in normal society, should be looked at with great admiration. Tom Brokaw the anchorman, newsman, and author, described a hero as being people who rise to the occasion and slip away quietly. I can't think of a better description for the heroes in this room. They don't do what they do for recognition. Obviously, you can ask many of them when they look at their paychecks, they don't do it for the money. They do this because that's who they are. That's what they do. This is evidenced by the video that you just saw, the 9-11 tragedies, the Oklahoma City bombings, 
The natural disasters that are encountered across this country with Hurricanes Katrina, Katrina and Rita, and here locally, when they respond to our car wrecks, our fires, our crimes, they're there to serve the people. They're always putting their needs secondary to those of the people that they're, they're responding to. Instincts have it for most of us that when danger arises, we want to run away from danger. First responders are wired much differently, as they are wired that when they see the danger, they run towards it. If I hear gunfire, I run away from it. A policeman runs towards it. If my house catches on fire, I, want to, I run away from it. The firemen run in it. In no greater time was this seen in, in, in New York when we almost saw it unfold before our very, very eyes. Due to the mar modern marvels of television, we could see people fleeing from the buildings in New York. But there were countless and numerous stories of the people who were exiting the buildings talking about they were going up 20-some flights and kept running into firemen. So the further they came down, the more firemen they saw coming up. They were running towards the danger, risking their lives to save the others. At some point, I'm sure we've all been aided by a first responder. And I'm sure at some point, that first re responder quietly slipped away. So now is our time to take the time and thank these ladies and gentlemen for the work that they do. As I said, they don't do this for the money or the recognition or the rewards. They do it because this is who they are and that's what they do. So for these reasons, I want you to remember these men and women throughout the year. Remember them in your prayers. And when you see them and have the opportunity, remember them by telling them thank you. To all those that are here today and for those that aren't here, I want to say thank you. And may God bless you and keep you safe always.